everyone, and welcome back. Before I start the video, I just want to say thank you for being patient. I uh, work a long job, so I don't really have time to come in here and not only just to work on the animatronics, but you know I have to design them in Fusion 360. I have to 3D print them. I have to figure out why the 3D print isn't working. I have to go back and redesign it. Then I have to paint it, and then I gotta do all that stuff. So, you know, creating a video like this takes time, but I am thankful for those who just sticked around for that and being patient with me. And before I really start, I wanted to give a special thanks to my Patreons for your support. Uh, we got Blade at EX, Jumpy Monkey, Exfixia, Cody E. Ahoy, Richie Gilbert, Safina, Buster TM, Gannat, DZ Macy Mar, Ferald HGS, Blazeman, Chris Zero, Seth Lord, Cyber Dragon 725, Morhara, Miski Haza, Borealis German, Aaron 25746, Spicy Ica, Jack Afton, Foliz Ersk, Melissa, Trendy Dude 3, Cayenne Gray, and Kevin Seesmore. I am so sorry if I mispronounced any of your names. I'm terrible with names, <laughs> but thank you for your support. It does help. Now, a little intro out of the way, let's get into the video. Before we get to his new design, I want to go over Bon Bon's old shoulder design. His old shoulder design used two servos, just like his new one, but in this case, he would I just super glued a servo to a 3D printed part, and then 3D printed a custom horn to then attach to another servo to then rotate this whole piece as a whole. It worked. It gave him extreme, you know, range of motion. It's just that it looked ugly, <laughs> and the hot glue would, you know, melt because the servo would heat up, so it would fall apart. It worked, but, I mean, it's not that great. But a lot of the ideas, like the heated inserts, did transfer over. Now, for his elbow here, not much changed. The only difference in his connection piece here is that it's just modified to be shorter for his new design. The big change is the fact that his wrist is gone, mostly at least. I had no choice but to remove it because his forearm was just too heavy and his elbow servo wouldn't work. So these are all the pieces that are going to make up Bon Bon's arm, the endo and the shells. Now you'll notice on the shells here that they are mirrored of each other. The reason is because I just designed the left arm and when I went to go 3D print the right arm I just mirrored everything. And the best thing about it, since I planned that for the torso to also be mirrored, everything fits perfectly in place. Now when it comes to moving these parts, we're going to need servos like this MG90S. Pretty powerful, but not too powerful. Now this little guy, this 5 gram one, finicky. Very finicky. If you give it anything over 5 volts or you tighten that screw too tight, it will die. But not like these. These 25 kilogram servos are the main power behind his arms. The old design, one was linked to another directly, but this time they're working together to move a 3D printed part. Originally, I tried having some different method of, you know, having one sit on the other, but after experimenting, it just didn't really work out. I, I kept pulling my hair out trying to figure out how to get it to work, but eventually we came up to this final design. This design is far better and much more efficient than the old one ever will be. Also, it looks nicer. So, Bon Bon's arm has two ranges of motion, tilt and rotation. The rotation is easy. You just attach the arm onto the top 25 kilogram servo, and then when it spins, the arm will spin. Now for tilt, the second servo will push and pull it, and when these two work together, it can completely mimic the shoulder's rotation. And that blue component, it attaches to the servo using a metal servo horn, and there are heated inserts in the part so I can screw it directly into it so it doesn't lose connection. So in my left hand I have shoulder connection 2 and in my right I have shoulder connection 3. You'll notice that these two inserts are kind of familiar. That's because they're in the exact same orientation as the original shoulder design. I did this just so I didn't have to reprint the shoulder and just save me some time. Now this third component is the most important because it allows the shoulder to rotate and the connection point for the shoulder tilt to not be at a weird angle and break. 
the biggest issue with the hold shoulder design originally is that I had to figure out a way for the whole endo piece to rotate but also stay connected to a stationary servo. And after about 20 failed attempts, I finally got it. It it needs a little tweaking in some areas, but I mean, screw it. It's good enough for now. <laughs> Originally, I was going to reprint the shoulder shell so that the second shoulder component would be built in, but I realized that if something broke, it would require a lot more time and you know PLA to fix it. So I just used the already pre-made screws that I had for the old shoulder design and just ran with it. I'm kind of lucky that I actually thought somewhat this far ahead, even though I had no intention of doing it this way at the beginning. But hey, it works. And that is how the shoulder is made, basically. All one big piece. So that was Bon Bon's shoulder. Now I need to move on to the elbow. Now this servo will rotate the elbow along the shoulder piece. This is the easiest way I've found to mimic that motion. It can only go about 180 depending on what the start position is, but it may be more but in less depending on how I set it up when I do the final attachments. His elbow is very, very limited in its range. He won't be able to bend his elbow all the way back, nor he'll be able to move it all the way forward because of that plastic piece, kind of like a guard system to keep it all in place. This is the primary servo holder. This basically just holds servo in place. I screwed a horn into the component so I can attach it directly to the servo that will rotate it. Like and show. This was the most difficult part for his elbow, surprisingly, because it was so difficult to get the horn in a place where it wouldn't be too squishy, but it wouldn't be too dangly, so it would, you know, be easy to break. I have to screw the uh, servo holder on first before I can attach the servo because there's no way to access the screw once the servo is installed. And, you know, Give it a little wiggle test, make sure it's not too loose, but not too tight. Now, for the servo's position, it uses something called PWM, or Pulse Width Modulation. This little guy is capable of pumping out a precise PWM signal. 1500 is usually the neutral, and these the highest number and lowest number is the most counterclockwise and most counterclockwise. It's better to, definitely better to have your servos preset before you install your final components. Now, I'm showing these bearings in the design. Originally, they did kinda help deal with the stress, so the servo didn't have to work as hard, but I don't know what happened with the design, but it just, when I screwed them in place, it made it harder for the servo to move, so I'll have probably to go back and just lower or raise the hole somewhere, or m maybe not at all. The servo seems to work just fine without it, so uh, not really necessary. The reason why the servo has its weird horn design like this, mainly so that if it does go too far, it will catch itself, so it won't have to worry about a gear getting stripped. The horn is broken because uh, I'm really stingy and I really don't want to go and get a new fresh component straight out of the box. Now, I chose to use the servo screws to actually attach the horn to the 3D printed part for no other reason just than I have a lot of them and I might as well use them. They're not really necessary. I could have glued them. I could have used some of the 2mm screws I have on me. But I had to use two because, I can, as you can see, it's pivoting on that one screw. So add two and it no longer has the wiggle wiggles. <laughs> just showing off the PWM so you can see you know, it's the closest it can bring the arm to the torso is at 2200, and I believe the lowest is 15 or 14. I said that because I wanted to be realistic, even though it's a you know animatronic with a child's soul. The elbow shouldn't just you know bend backwards. Also, it would make it harder for the actual servo to make the full loop. I've already mentioned this, but the wrist for Bon Bon was the worst part of this project. 
I am happy that I went with this design at the end. <laughs> Even though it may be simpler, it has its quirks. His elbow is the starting point because I how all the screws have to be put in place and how you kind of get locked out of accessing them. You have to start at the wrist and work your way back to the elbow. Now this piece, as you can see, not only has a big hole down the middle, but also two heated inserts. That is to attach the elbow through the forearm to that piece, locking all three parts together. Now on that flat area, the servo horn for that little small servo will go on. I screw that onto it, and then with the hole, I put a very small screwdriver to then install the very small, very easy to lose screw. And the best thing is I finally got the holes aligned for the servo horn, so I would worry about bending the plastic, and they just slide right in. The only issue is that when you're working with these little tiny servos, not only do you easily lose the screws that go with them, but you have to be very careful in which screwdriver you use and how tight you're going to turn the screw. This one took me a minute to find in my kit that would actually fit because I didn't want to, you know, strip the screw and then have it locked out, but also I don't want to lose my grip and accidentally make it too tight. If the screw is too tight, it will probably just cause the servo to lock up and burn out. But once that piece is done, all I have to do is slide the pole into the forearm, line up the holes, and screw everything together. And forearm's done. And the arm just lastly connects at the elbow. The, uh, we already put the elbow's PWM signal at neutral, so it's kind of important to also place it at neutral. Now you're gonna notice in this part is that uh, the servo sort of acts weird. It's almost like it's struggling to fully move. That was mainly because the voltage was too low. And as I mentioned earlier, the bearing that's on the other side was making it harder for the actual servo to move its pieces. So that's why I was struggling. But once I took that screw out and the whole connection was lined up how I want it to be, it ran perfectly fine, like it was nothing. I'm just gonna be quiet and let you enjoy the, the sight of Bon Bon just pumping iron. And here it is, the entire arm fully assembled with that little spring added just to probably kind of help the servo recall the forearm to make it easier to lift. In reality, it didn't do anything, but I thought it would try at least. Now we have to, just like the other pieces, I have to start piece by piece because if I don't, I lose access to the screws and I can't install them. For the shoulder, it's quite easy. Just one simple little big screw and done. Ah, it's dangling. Just to give a nice little turn test, make sure it's not too tight. Don't want to accidentally be grinding something by accident. Now, since I kind of wore out the holes during testing, the uh, three millimeter screw sort of just slides right in to the tilt joint for uh, his shoulder. Kinda probably should print it. Kinda don't probably want to. But I mean, it's not a big deal. It works good enough. Okay, that black thing is the tilt ball end connector for the tilt servo. Once I screw that into the heated insert, the arm is fully assembled, fully done. The christening, if you will. It's just gonna take a lot and lot of torque because my fi my fat fingers kept getting in the way. Originally, the ball and connector was in the middle, but just due to trial and error, we just said, screw it, put it on the outside. Problem solved. Ta-da! She is fixed. And that's it. That is Bon Bon's arm assembled, installed, troubleshoot, everything. Now, I want to take this opportunity to not only say thank you again to 
not only just my patrons, but also for everyone, all 170,000 of you, for liking and commenting, giving your support. I mean, I truly don't deserve any of that. I just want to say thank you. Really, really thank you. And I'm still trying to get an idea of how to do these videos properly, so, you know, criticisms, fully want to hear them. You know, don't do this, hey, try this, hey, this part was terrible, don't ever do that again, my ears are bleeding, seriously, stop, please, stop. You know, stuff like that. I'm perfectly okay with it. And I just want to let you guys know, again, that I really appreciate your support. I'm happy that you're here with me with the insanity of trying to build these things. You know, just follow me along the way. I'm glad you're here. I hope you can stay. Like, follow, subscribe, share, all that stuff. I will see you later. Peace out and have a nice day. I still don't know why I did that at the very end, but... <laughs>